Hello, everyone, and welcome to RHAP. I'm your host, Aaron Armstrong, and we are here tonight to talk about this Tuesday night episode of Big Brother Canada 12. Uh, we're not usually here on a Tuesday night, but we did have to skip the Friday podcast because there was no, no information. There's nothing to talk about on Friday. Uh, basically, uh, everything we talked about on Wednesday was all the information we still had on Friday. So instead, we decided to push the podcast to Tuesday so that we'd have more stuff to talk about. We now have some episodes as well as 12 hours of drops from just what they dropped today over the course of four previous days that they had not dropped information. And so that's why we are here tonight on a Tuesday night to talk through it all. And with me to talk through it all is Maggie. How are you doing, Maggie? Hi, Taryn. Hi, Iman. Um, I'm doing great. Oh, sorry. I just introduced the second guest, but I, I just am excited <laughs> to be here with both of you. Uh, it's been a minute since uh, we've been on a podcast together, and I'm so excited to talk. I wish, you know, there was maybe a little more to talk about, but we'll talk about what we got, you know, we, and we got a, a decent amount of stuff. So I'm, I'm excited to be here. Let's do this. Yes. Well, also here tonight is, in fact, Iman. How you doing, Iman? Hello, Taryn and Maggie. <laughs> I'm really excited to be here. You know, you know, you know. It, I mean, I feel like I feel like we got like a nice little chunk of info to talk about. I didn't watch all 12 hours of the dailies today. I just simply how could just, you? I, you only had I eight hours to watch it. I, exactly. I just wasn't able to. Um, I tried to get as much as I could, but you know, I I started with the latest one because I felt like I was like, let's just cut to the chase, right? And so mm -hmm. I feel like you know, it was kind of like a nice game of like. You know those TV shows or those crime mysteries where you see the result and then you go back and like watch how it happened. That's kind of like what I was like doing throughout the day today. So that kind of made it a little fun in my eyes. But uh, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to talk about everything and, and see you know where this is going to go for tomorrow. Yeah, we will. I won't spoil anything right now. But uh, my experience watching the daily is because I, I I do not go out of order because I I wouldn't be able to. I wouldn't have the heart uh to, to go backwards <laughs> also like just can anyone believe that you would go out of order like have they met you come on you know we all have i do i show. do see the headlines right uh right, so exactly. i know generally what's hap what's going to happen and what to look out for um but so basically i watched roughly nine hours of the drops thinking <laughs> How in the world is what they say is going to happen going to happen it doesn't make any sense to me and then what the flip uh, happens, yeah. which we'll talk about eventually. Uh <laughs> That's what I got so upset about because I feel like for the most part, I do what you do. And I, I just sort of, I, you know, I watch because some people will even like the daily will drop and then they'll go to the end of the daily and people have information on Twitter already for yeah. what happens at the end. And like, and I like to be on Twitter. I like to like be a part of the live conversation. And so I was like, you know what, this time. I'm just going to go to the end and see what happens. And then I'll go back because I just, I hate it. Like, you know, I always having to play catch up, but such is the I culture was, of the digital daily, you know? Yes. I was unfortunately at jury duty today. Um, so I oh, did no. not get a chance. I know I didn't get picked for a jury. A so... DCK? Oh, okay. never mind. <laughs> well, it, it was, and they interviewed me and then they didn't pick me. So, you know, I guess I wasn't the right candidate, but, mm -hmm. um, so I didn't get to see the digital dailies with my own eyes, but I went to all of the sources on Twitter. I feel like I gathered some of the info. I'm mm -hmm. ready. I'm ready to listen to the stories that you two have to tell us yeah i mean if it wasn't my job i i think i would probably just avoid twitter and go blind through the dailies because i do think mm -hmm. it's less interesting to know what's going to happen uh at least with the dailies um but we're here to talk about the episode so let's talk let's talk about it. uh goose is our hoh he nominated todd and tola um and I mean, let me tell you, this this whole week has felt like every other week where mm -hmm. the HOH is making wild decisions, trusting Spicy too much, uh, and Spicy is trying to actively work against Anthony while also conceding to what he what he wants is what I would say, but it's it's more often like what she thinks he would want uh, than than what he's actually pushing for. Um, but, uh, but Todd and Tola for right from the get go, by the way, terrible nominations, as far as I'm concerned, uh, he had a good relationship with Tola, um, not really any relationship with Todd. 
Uh, Bailey just spent an entire week trying to get him evicted. Um, at the very least, you you do want to, and I will say this about his HOH, you do want to foster a proxy war. Um, you want somebody from from you know Anthony's side, theoretically, and somebody from uh, Spicy's side. Now, he doesn't know that those are the sides necessarily, but mm -hmm. uh, ideally, you do get two of those people up. I think Vivek was the obvious choice uh, instead of Tola to put up on the block uh, alongside yeah. Bailey, um, who, again, was already not on your side and really gets the women to, like, fight even harder. Um, but, uh, but hey. Yes, of nice course. Fight. Of course, Vivek is, like, the choice. He nominated you last week. Like, what? Mm -hmm. But... Also, what is going on with Todd? Like, uh, we'll get into it in the episode, but like, are are you kidding me? What? But I, as a viewer, I'm like, okay, I guess he can go. What? <laughs> what even yeah. is this? Yeah, it's ridiculous. I'm like, you might have had he might have had a good relationship with him, but there's clear there's no game sense happening from this man. Like, he's irrelevant to your game if he's going to be throwing a veto. What? What's going on? I, I, I agree with you. Like Vivek was the choice, but also I'm not that mad about the Todd choice if he's doing ev everything that he's doing, which is nothing. Yeah, yeah. personally speaking, <laughs> I mean, he didn't even get up to sit in his chair. I just—it's mean, so. It's so, and you know what? To his credit, which we'll talk about later on, we do get to see him spice it up just a little bit but it's it, it it's it's very I'm, much giving bench warmer bench oh, warmer to the max oh my gosh i'm not kidding that when because you know me and the competitions like don't love them so i was moving about my room while the competition was going on and when i heard him say like I'm just going to sit back i don't want to be out in front i don't want to like i want to sit back so that i was like I felt like Brittany when Kathy was like taking her time. I, I was like, do you know where you are? Are you kidding me? What? Yeah, very much that. Head very on a swivel. Energy. <laughs> well, uh, with Todd and Tola on the block, uh, this is when I, I do think that um, it, it was an interesting experience, I will say, watching Sunday's episode with zero context from drops, feeds, anything um because i think i i it made me realize like i i take for granted just how much the extra knowledge uh enhances my experience of watching the episodes because watching sunday's episode and trying to actually figure out what happened with like goose's hoh and why he made the nominations he did i was like none of this makes any sense no it's like, virtually there's possible. so much missing from this Mm -hmm. uh and and i and i and then i watched tonight and i was explaining the what happened in the drops in between the what during the commercial breaks to to the chat um and there were people in my chat like oh i'm so glad you just explained that bit to me about where goose is coming from because what he's doing right now would have made no sense and i i didn't even realize that it wouldn't have made sense and now i'm realizing like just again like how much it really does enhance the experience mm -hmm. um, to to have this this knowledge, and and I do get that like the the spoiler side of things um, can uh, can detract from the experience, I think, to some degree. Um, but uh, but I do think that the knowledge uh, trade off is is, mm -hmm. is absolutely worth it, at least for me, um, because this episode I think also didn't make genuinely doesn't make a lot of sense and definitely doesn't capture even what we were able to see in the drops from today in terms of what happened with this veto. Why wasn't it used? What was the actual plan? Where does Goose actually stand in all of this? I was confused on Sunday as to why Anthony was like, I'm going to make sure I protect Tola and then never seemingly had a conversation with uh, Goose. And then Tola just went up and I was like, I thought Goose was with Anthony. Why is he going against Anthony? Well, this is why he's not with Anthony. He's with Spicy. Goose mm -hmm. is actually an extremely loyal Spicy soldier. Uh, and you, I don't think necessarily would have known that. Yeah. <laughs> from from uh, the drops or the episodes, to be clear. But we finally did figure it out this week on the drops. I feel like Big Brother Canada wants to be 
survivor so bad. Like, it's always these conversations, these seemingly pivotal conversations that we see in both the episode and the dailies that end in like a cliffhanger or like a will they won't they situation, which doesn't always necessarily make sense for the outcome that we eventually do get. So I'm like, you're doing all of this like misleading and you're only letting us like, first of all, you're only letting us see certain conversations that you want because you want to, you know, form this narrative of what's going to happen. And then you try to follow suit in the episode, but then sometimes mm -hmm. what we get in the dailies doesn't necessarily coincide with what you're actually showing in the edited fit. So it's like, you're telling two stories at one time and it's just, it's too much. Like, honestly, it would make, again, if we had just regular feeds, <laughs> it would be much more better. But like, because of the fact that they're trying to tell a story on the feeds, it's like, what are we doing? I just, I, I just, I, I can't, I can't, I, I can't, and especially with what happened in this episode right now with the whole conversation between, and we'll get to it, but the whole conversation between uh, uh, Elijah and, and Lexus about what's going to happen with DeVito, I was like, you're trying to like form this edit around like the, it just doesn't, it, it, it's not coalescing. It's not making sense. The through line is weird. Everyone is which way. I just, I just don't, uh, I don't get it. I really don't. <laughs> Yes. Take it. So, so basically, what what was happening here is that uh, Goose, you know, obviously was told by Tola the truth, which is that Kayla was campaigning for him to go. Uh, he then went to Kayla with that information. They were like, okay, so Tola really has to go, and he was perfectly willing to do that. Like Tola's trying to mess with me, talking about my allies. Um, <laughs> Tola and Todd on the block makes sense, and and the the, the Bailey back door was still on the table because she was also. Obviously, nobody denied that she was campaigning for Goose to go the week before, but the women didn't actually want uh, Bailey to leave. So they were working on convincing, you know, Goose to 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 actually go with the Tola plan. Um, and and pretty quickly, he was like, I don't actually want Bailey to go. I want Tola to go. Um, and he even was rooting for Bailey in the veto competition because he didn't want to have to put Bailey on the block to appease the other side. Um, and at one point he even was like, if I have to put somebody up, it'll be Vivek now. Um, but that's Ooh. a whole other, yeah, that's a whole other side plot that, that didn't end up going anywhere, obviously. Um, but the point being Goose was very much, very firmly on the side of I'm with Spicy, Kayla and Avery. Mm -hmm. They want Bailey to stay. They want Todd to stay. They want Tola to go. I'm going to support them in that decision. I want Tola to go. Whether that means he stays on the block against Todd, he gets Todd gets replaced with Vivek, or Todd gets replaced with Bailey. No matter what happens, we have the votes to send Tola home. Regardless, we just have to prevent Tola from getting off the block. That was basically the idea pre-veto. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. That's not <laughs> what we saw. Right. So no. <laughs> that's why I'm like, this is brand new information mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, the veto happens. We see Lexus wins it. Um, now, the plan, basically, as soon as Lexus won, was that Goose was like, okay, I guess we're dropping the the Vivek stuff, probably, because Lexus and, and Anthony and Matt mm -hmm. are all Matt. celebrating, like, we got her. Bailey's mm -hmm. done. Mm -hmm. um, and so they're like, so Bailey's going up, right? And he's like, yes. Bailey's mm -hmm. going up, but he's actually talking to Kayla and Spicy and Avery about how, okay, so Bailey will need to go up, but we're still going to vote to keep her. We have the votes. Uh, Tola will go. We just need to make sure that, that Lexus uses the veto on Todd and not Tola. And then we saw a little bit of that in the episode. So there was a little bit of back and forth. Never really got decided, though, who it would be used on because it didn't okay. end up mattering. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Now, while all this is happening, we also see this from the episodes. There's the Matt Lexus drama, right? Um, so mm -hmm. again, uh, Lex this uh, happened so quickly. <laughs> Tola and goes coincidentally Tola, as well. Yeah. Tola tells Matt, "Watch out!" Or sorry, Tola tells Goose, "Watch out for Kayla." Goose runs into Kayla. Matt warns Goose, "Hey, watch out for Kayla. There's a reason she didn't use the veto on you." Uh, there was campaigning going on, and we, as we saw, Goose runs that straight to Kayla multiple times. 
Um, mm -hmm. And Kayla goes to Anthony multiple times as a part of her pitch to convince Anthony. Uh, why is she trying to convince Anthony, you might say? Why is she bringing this to Anthony? It's because of Spicy. Because Spicy's playing both sides as she's been doing. She's going to Anthony and saying, I want to keep Tola. I agree with you. But these girls really want to keep Todd. And I can't go against them. They'll kill me. So mm -hmm. you need to convince them to agree with you uh, because I, I'm i stuck. Um, and then she's going to, to the women and she's saying, hey, guys, Anthony's pushing so hard for Tola to stay. I can't believe him. We can't let him win. He's going to try and convince you, but don't listen to him. So, but he's the vote we need. He's the person we need to convince. Like, we need to convince him to be on board because that, like, maintains her position in the middle. She doesn't have to choose a side. She wants them to convince each other. So She's getting them to interact. And so Kayla is trying to convince Anthony that Tola needs to go because, hey, Goose is telling me that Tola said my name. Goose is telling me that Matt said my name. If I can't trust Matt, I can't trust Tola. They're together. It's a whole package deal. I need Todd in the game. Uh, so Anthony now knows what's happening with Goose. He's trying to discredit Goose. He's trying to say, hey, Goose is just saying a bunch of things to a bunch of people. Um, but then he says it to Kayla again. Kayla goes back to, to Anthony. We saw this in the episode. Uh, and Anthony's trying to get her to talk to Matt, but she doesn't want to. Then we see this scene that was not in the drops where uh, Kayla goes out into the backyard and uh, rants about slop. <laughs> now, good for Kayla. <laughs> can I just say? Funny. <laughs> so the in the drops, they cut straight from Anthony trying to get Kayla to go grab Matt for him so that they can talk. Straight to the women, I believe, in the backyard, being like, "He knows. How does Matt know? How does he know?" Uh, he must know. Did you see the way he was acting around us? He must know. Yeah. Um, and so I was wondering how this happened. Did Matt actually know? And so to see this scene where they're so obvious. They're like, we can't hey. tell Matt. We can't let him know that we know. And then, and then like, they're, they're like, we hate you. Basically, we hate you. We think you should leave. Get out of here. I couldn't tell. I couldn't tell if Matt knew or not. I was like, it was wait, so awkward. I was like, wait, is is this just like editing magic where like they want me to think that he knows or like does he know? Because like the the whole padding of the back with Kayla was so, ooh, I just like I felt his hand on my back. I was like, don't touch me. Like I couldn't. Take I it. <laughs> I notice sometimes in these games, and you know. This is maybe not I, – I would feel more, like, confident in saying this assumption about Matt, like, if if we had – obviously, all the disclaimers. But, like, I've noticed sometimes in these games that, like, people who perhaps have not experienced, like, cattiness or, you know, like, friendship drama in their childhood come on big brother and then they don't pick up on things like this you know like people who seem like they just like you know they're just like chill people like men or women you know like but just more like chill people who just want to have a good time and hang like sometimes they don't pick up on stuff like this and and i feel like we see these types of scenes kind of a lot on Big Brother where someone will mm -hmm. be there and like everybody will be looking at each other and they'll be obviously talking in code about them and the person will be just like chilling. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't surprise me if he didn't know, actually. I didn't know. <laughs> I was like, what's going on? Well, <laughs> what that was the thing is that they were convinced that he knew, mm -hmm. but there was no indication that I saw in any of the future drops that he had any idea. <laughs> Mm -hmm. But they were convinced that he knew, which got them to talking about, we need him to go up on the block this week. We need to get Goose to do this. And so they pitched to Goose, essentially, you should, you should do this. And Goose was like, whoa, that's, that's too much. That's a bridge too far. Um, and so the, the idea gets shut down. Um, but so through all of this, the plan is for the veto to be used. Lexus plans to have a conversation with uh, with Goose the day of to decide who they're going to use it on because they have differing opinions. Um, now, again, we miss a lot, but somewhere in there, I, it certainly doesn't seem to be the conversation they showed in the episode because 
between Spicy and Lexus in the car that did it because Lexus later explains that the reason she doesn't want to use the veto is because she's now heard from Bailey that uh, like all of this information from about Goose and how Goose might want to backdoor Matt. Uh, and so why would she use the veto if maybe Matt's going to go on the block? Um, now, why does Bailey A, mention this to Lexus, B, know the information in the first place? Why is everyone telling everyone everything? Why is Goose telling Kayla about Tola and Matt? Why is why are Spicy and Kayla talking about all of this like anti Matt, anti Dougie stuff around Bailey? Why is uh why is Kayla talking to Anthony about Matt stuff from Goose? It's so much information leakage going on. It's absurd. Um, I blame Anthony. I also I was also about to say, I think that that's why Spicy's been able to get away with what she's been able to get away with so far, because it's the culture of the house, exactly. sort of. Like, it's not locked down at all. It's pretty leaky. It, it's it's leaky and fast and loose. So a player like Spicy V, it, it, it sort of contributes to what I always say, which is like the main strategy like the person in the house who's the main strategy driver kind of gets to create the culture of the house which is why sometimes the house culture is more friendly than it is other times and that that would make sense if spicy bee has been kind of the one in the driver's seat the whole time that this is just like a disaster strategy wise in terms of keeping it tight <laughs> see i think I, I i agree i think it's also partly to blame with anthony as well because i feel like there's like this whole narrative of like if you say Anthony's name, da, 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 and then you don't come to him and tell him and mm -hmm. reassure him that he's going to be gone. So everyone is like saying like, oh, well, I did say this, but it was only because of this and this, that, and the third. So don't worry because I'm going to say this ahead of time. So then you don't have to worry about it later on down the line. And so like everyone's just like saying, I'm going to spill this, but it actually might be true on my end, but I don't want you to know that. So I'm going to tell you that I'm saying it, even though it is mm -hmm. true on my end, but I want you to I know so that if it saying. does come back to me, then you know that I told you already ahead of time. So if it does come back to you, you know I already said it. So it's like it's like just this whole like culture of just like being like, oh, I want to get ahead of it, even if it's true or even if it's not true. It's, it's a it. You're right. It's a little Sari at the beginning of last season when she was <laughs> running that that game. But like this is this is the thing, right? Like the whole story is that like you say Anthony's name, you go home. Um, mm -hmm. But like the reality is that Spicy is getting people to say Anthony's name, then telling Anthony about it, then targeting the person for Anthony, then regretting it, trying to reverse it, but the momentum is too, has too, gone too far, then being like, how is he doing this? Mm -hmm. Everybody that says his name goes home, he's controlling the whole house. It's like, Spicy, then, yes. you're actually controlling the house. <laughs> she can say his name all she wants after that because that's the... It's it's a mess. It is an entire mess. <laughs> like I can't. I oh, and people are like a, a lot of people have been like saying like oh, Spicy V is just like doing too much, or she is just out here just to like cause chaos. I honestly feel like a bit of that is true. I do believe that, but I also I agree with you, Taryn, in that like I think that she is doing a lot to like ride the middle. Mm -hmm. but she's so messy of a person but also not messy enough to know like not messy enough to not realize that like the more that you do this the more you are kind of giving the game to anthony in the end and you're starting mm -hmm. to realize that but now you're like it's it's getting to the point where it's like it's getting too late to like pull it back so now you're trying to like find this like easy middle to get control again and it's it, this is what we are left with. <laughs> it's just like this constant back and forth of people <laughs> relaying messages to Anthony through V. Like it's it's so much. Oh my God, it's a mess. Why can't we have the feats? <laughs> like I'm just such like... a mess. <laughs> um, should we talk about the the veto competition? I feel like uh, in so terms boring. Yeah, I mean, like in terms of like like it's just it's just another kind of veto competition where the nominees if they did if they didn't want the nominees to win there's no chance the nominees were going to win this mm -hmm. uh like which which kind of sucks um mm -hmm. i i think it's probably not a huge coincidence this is a veto that didn't get used 
Um, I think that uh, it was it's always most likely going to go to the person that is the least likely to use it. Um, and so uh, unless like everyone is on board to use it. So uh, I think, you know, maybe not exactly like super well thought out there. Um, but yeah, I mean, it wasn't like the most exciting. I I, I think it's it was at least um, probably decently fair. Uh, so I can give it that. But like, yeah, I, I, I like really the variety of the comps. I like yeah. that it was sort of, you know, choose your own adventure type deal. That was kind of fun um, and engaging. But yeah, I agree. Like it's it's one of those comps where, yeah, it's kind of like easy to game if you mm -hmm. want a certain outcome. So, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I also just like like the the types of like comps where it, it's like one person trying to race against the clock rather than racing against each other is just less exciting to me. Yeah, I think um for TV. Yeah, I agree. I I think that uh there's a better way to do it. Maybe like one one-on-one -on -one matches or something yeah. like uh but you know, it it, it I, in general, I think the timer stuff is just not super. I, I I will say I didn't like uh notice blatant timer manipulation at the very least, uh which which is nice because these are even worse when it's like three, <laughs> two. You're talking traders timers, Taryn. Traders is that what timers, mole <laughs> timers. You know, basically any one of these shows somehow. Timers. Somehow they always get it in right <laughs> under the wire. Um. So. Uh. So yes. And and we see that Lexus wins her second uh, comp win. Um. After her first win in the, the she won safety in the first week. Mm -hmm. Uh. So you know watch out for Lexus. But like, hey, Bailey did very well as well. I mean, I um, have to say one thing about mm -hmm. Bailey, and it's that I. I am so sad this season specifically we don't have the stock watch because I would be obsessed with hearing everybody talk about Bailey's position because she has been playing pretty much all wrong but also like is it really her fault and also she's been scrappy and she somehow has found, found herself like I think in a much better position than I expected her to be at this point but she still also is in a great deal of danger but she does seem like the type of player who can squeak through to the final four like she you know what i mean like it, i don't think she's dead in the water and i think she's the type of person that if she makes it past a certain point could really gain momentum i'm just really interested in her and maybe it's because we don't have feeds and she's like the underdog person for me right now that i'm like what's she doing but i, yeah. I think her positioning is really interesting right now to me at least no, yeah she's I mean, like, very dynamic for sure mm -hmm. For better or worse, her strategy coming into the game was I'm going to work with the women like mm -hmm. ride or die, hell or high water. If I go down with the ship, I go down with the ship. And that has been her strategy. And it has kind of worked for her in the sense that the women are protecting her. Yeah. Uh, it, it's also kind of not working for her because the women are only protecting her because they see her as like a blunt instrument that they can use uh, to weaponize and, and throw away when they need to. Um, but so far, she's been kind of squeaking by through their protection. So, but but that's what I'm saying about her, though. Like right now, she's the blunt instrument. But if these things are brewing between the directors, and like they're, she's the type of player that, like, if there is a civil war going on, she can squeak by a little bit to, and get into like a final six, final five position. I don't know. I see her sort of like a JC Lynn type. Like I would, I'm trying to think of. I would want like that to Hale? happen. My 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 issue with that ha like potentially happening is that I don't know that she's the kind of player that like slides in. I think that she's always the like the reason why like things blowing up in a civil war occurring can help like third party players is because third party players can then play both sides while the mm -hmm. two sides war. Whereas I feel like if things blow up, Bailey will jump into the front lines of one of the sides <laughs> and still be a big target. <laughs> sure. I, okay. When you say it like that, that is her personality. And that's probably <laughs> why as like a, now a TV only watcher, I'm like yeah. so into her, you know, nah, because she's she... got that type of personality. 
I mean, I'd like the fact that she is not afraid to stick it to Anthony. I think that that is like in a house full mm-hmm. of people that are just like, oh, I don't want to piss him off. Like she mm-hmm. is just like, no, 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 honey, 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 honey. No, <laughs> like I, mm-hmm. I, I love that. I love that. And is it like the best for her game all of the time? No. Some of the time. Yeah, kind of. She just really she just really feels like she's really being herself. Mm -hmm. Like she, and I think that's what makes her such a dynamic TV character. Like maybe not the greatest big brother player, but like, I think that I'm really enjoying watching her because like, she just can't help herself in a Mm. lot of, and, and she is trying to play as optimally as she can, but she like is also, she just like has to be true to herself. In, in that way. You know what I, I mean? Think she's just playing from like this position of like, all of these things happen to me and it is not fair. Therefore, I need to be the one that is constantly clawing my way to the top where like and it, when it, whenever a player is in that kind of position, I feel like their inhibitions are slightly lowered a lot of the time. So they are much more able to just be like, throw caution to the wind. So it's kind of mm-hmm. interesting in this episode in particular to see her sort of like switch spots with Kayla during that whole yeah. thing in the backyard because like it's like oh so now everyone's telling you're telling her to calm down when that was you last week so it's just yeah. like I I she's very much a dynamic character this season and I I do appreciate that very much about her <laughs> me too me too I like really I if she goes next week or the week after like I'm really gonna miss her presence on the show genuinely mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. for sure Yes. So, uh, really, I, I honestly was expecting something a little more dramatic at the end of this episode because it, it's not that often that the plan changes at the last minute. But and and the plan was to use this veto, and then like day of, Lexus backed out. Uh, and you know, I, I was expecting a little a little more of that dramatics. Uh, but uh, but don't worry. You know, we'll get into spoilers soon. Uh, dramatics are yet to come. Hopefully. Um, now that I'm realizing it'll probably be a pretty packed episode tomorrow with the with the executive veto in play. Yeah. Um, do we have to do skip the dishes too? Uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Can't forget about uh, that. Yes, but the veto is not used. Tola and Todd get locked in on the block, and um, there's a lot to talk about in terms of where this could go. Um, what are the ramifications of uh, the veto not being used? Uh, is there another is there a civil war about to break out between Anthony's side and Spicy's side in terms of who they want to go? Uh, because Spicy really wants Ola to go and Anthony would prefer for Todd to go. So uh, that's kind of where we leave off in terms of events in the episode, though we did see at the end there a little preview. Now, when Arissa said last week that the executive veto is going to come into play next Wednesday. I was like, okay, so probably for the following week, right? Like they're probably going to introduce it on Wednesday, tell us what the power is, and then have us vote on who we want to give it to, even though we have no idea who we should give it to because we don't know the events of the week yet, uh, and and so on and so forth. However, there seems to be an implication in this episode that uh, that the executive veto is in play for this week um, and that uh, somebody may or may not get it and then use it tomorrow night um i can tell you that despite the fact that the latest digital daily is labeled april 1st there was actually zero content from april 1st in that digital daily drop uh so um we have not seen the day in which tola wakes up and finds the executive veto missing uh so we have no idea and quite honestly i don't even know where to begin to speculate (laughs) I personally am still of the opinion that it's not going to come into play this week. I feel like it's just a bait and switch, which Big Brother Canada is prone to. So I, um, so I'm, I'm, I'm. That's what that's what I'm rolling with because I just feel like it's just oh, you know, Tola could save himself. No, you're bit, you're going home. You're going home. <laughs> so we'll see. Um, I think it's a lot to turn around. I mean, it is interesting, as you said, that there was no April first content. Maybe it's just a one big ass April Fool's joke from the editors of Big Brother Canada. So we'll see. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, they label they label these da- these uh, dailies like a by a date, um, and then usually we'll have like like I said, like twenty minutes of content from that date. <laughs> like it's like right. they're not very accurate uh, in, in that sense. So I, who knows? Who knows with any of it? 
but uh, yeah, I, it's the thing. The thing for me is when I say where do we begin to, begin to speculate? It's does it even come into play this week? We don't know. Is somebody going to get it, or is it going to be just a looming power? We don't know. Who mm -hmm. gets it if somebody gets it? We don't know. What does it do if somebody gets it? We don't know. What does it do if somebody doesn't get it and it's just a looming power? We don't know. Uh, what kind of impact will it have on the week? Will it save somebody? We don't know. We don't even know who's going to be saved yet at this point. Uh, if there is going to be a saving. Um, I mean, I guess like if I had to if I had to speculate about what an executive veto would do, it would just be like whoever. If I don't know, like if a nominee wins the veto, they also get to choose the replacement nominee. They get like executive power over the HOH, maybe. But then that's kind that. of but they've already done that. And it's also kind of like silly because then what if the HOH wins the but then they don't compete? I don't know. It's weird. It's I would weird. imagine it's something more akin to the blood veto. Um, because <laughs> that never actually did anything. Um, so it probably has something to do with votes would be my guess. Uh, but it's, again, it's just like, who knows? And, and even if it did have something to do with votes, we don't know what impact that would have. Who gets it? What votes? It, does it change the nominees? There's so many different, like, potential Is outcomes. This secret veto where it's, like, not revealed until after the votes have read? I mean, and clearly, then, clearly it should it will be public like they, anybody could have found it missing. So I think they're all going to be like, oh, it's it's missing. And they're going to have to go on some kind of quest or challenge to figure out who gets it. Um, but uh, it, it's again, it's who knows. So uh, we don't know. We certainly don't. It's one of those things where it's like you want there to be possibility. But when there's too much possibility, it's just like, well, I guess. There's nothing really to even talk about that. It's like, yeah, it's too much, too much. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's that's about the episode. Anything else from the episode that we should talk about before we dip into some of the, the drops? Not for no. me. All right. Well, uh, let's do it then. Let's talk a little bit of spoilers. The Office of Civil Defense has issued the following message. This is a spoiler warning. A spoiler. Warning means that an actual spoiler against this country has been detected and that protective action should be taken. All right. So, uh, this is what happened. After the veto ceremony, Lexus has a conversation with Goose. And uh, Goose is like, so what? what's up? Why did you decide not to use the veto? You kind of planned to use it. And uh, Lexus says, well, I had a conversation with Bailey and she was questioning me about why I was trying to like pitch her to go on the block. And then she mentioned that there was some sort of plan backdoor Matt um, and that, you know, and all all this stuff, information that Bailey should not know that <laughs> not only should Bailey not know, but she shouldn't be comfortable telling Lexus. And how would Bailey know any of this? Because Goose did not co-sign Bailey knowing. He only mm -hmm. was talking to Spicy, Avery, and Kayla about it. And so the fact that Bailey not only knows, but is telling Lexus, and now he's getting in trouble for talking about this stuff with Lexus, Goose immediately is like, what the flip? Are you serious? Are you kidding me? They set me up. Uh, they set me up. I can't believe this. Uh, and he says, Lexus, how does how does Bailey know this? She's not in the alliance. Why are they protecting Bailey so much? It I can't believe I fell for it this whole time. It, there is a reason Kayla didn't use the veto on me. There is a reason that I got used as a pawn when when Spicy was the HOH. Lexus, let me tell you, Spicy and Kayla were pitching for Matt to go on the block. Spicy told me that she was going to nominate you and Matt next week. Um, Ooh, and this is dramatic. It was dramatic, and he's and he's freaking out, and he's like, I can't flip and believe this. Uh, I've been played this whole time. They set me up. They're working with Bailey, and he he takes his hat off, and he throws it on the couch, and he says, sorry, hat, you didn't deserve that, and he puts it back on his head, um, and he says, I can't flip and believe this, um, and, and, and while this is happening, you, like, you're like, oh, wow, he's revealing so much information to Lexus. This is why. What is Lexus's response? Lexus's response is, Mm hmm. Okay. Sure. 
right? Yeah. I mean, I just wanted to make sure that you knew that, you know, because I had that conversation with Bailey. So, and and Goose is like, I'm flipping out right now. I can't believe they played me for a fool, Lexus. I they they've been pitting me against Matt this whole time. And she's like, mm hmm. Right. No, that's Lexus is going Lexus. Okay, that 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 Lexus is in neutral, baby. Like it's not. <laughs> It's not going nowhere. <laughs> it's really not. <laughs> that was really good of mine. <laughs> um, so so th it gets even messier because Lexus goes downstairs and tells Matt the entire conversation before Matt has a chance to talk to Goose himself. And before he goes up to talk to Goose, while Goose is throwing his hat around, Matt goes straight to Spicy and says, guess what Goose just told Lexus? He told Lexus that you've been trying to pitch me and her, that you want to nominate us next week. Obviously, I don't believe it. Um, but yeah, Goose is saying all this stuff. And and Spicy is just like, uh, <laughs> what? That's, wait, 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 okay. that's wait, 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 wild. Hold on. Before you continue, Terry. So like, remind me. what Remind us, rather. What was the nature of the conversation between Matt and Goose concerning Avery and Kayla and, and Vic? Because that happened before this, right? Yeah, that, that was in the episode. And so he was hinting to Goose. Yes. That Avery and Kayla and Vic were not trustworthy. Correct? Basically saying, like, hey, we're in an alliance of seven. Mm -hmm. It should be you, me, Lexus. Uh, and, and Dougie. And, and Anthony. Dougie. Okay. As a four against their three, those three are super tight. They tr they run a campaign to get you out last week. Uh, they didn't use the veto on you. They used right, you as right, a pawn, right. like okay. Okay. so on okay. and so forth. Okay. And then he ratted that out to Kayla. Got it. Okay. Continue. Sorry. <laughs> yes. So um, now it's it's important to note. I think the reason Matt goes to Spicy is that he is not saying we can't trust Spicy uh to to goose because he actually does trust spicy because anthony is telling him to trust spicy anthony is looking out for spicy mm -hmm. so matt is concerned about kayla primarily and and and, and avery yeah. um okay and so he goes to oh, spicy like hey can yeah. you believe what they're saying to me uh can, can i yeah. sorry can i just one clarifying question so hot chocolate is done no okay <laughs> as of right now no but who, we'll okay. see at the end of the week okay um, it's lukewarm chocolate <laughs> okay because i was like you're naming everybody in a hot chocolate and they're all fighting so they're, they are all fighting but they are all still the power alliance yeah. so. right. yes it's getting, um yeah 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 so matt goes up to talk to goose and goose gives matt the same spiel i can't flip and believe it matt They've been trying to convince me to be against you this whole time. Uh, and it, like week two, when Spicy was HOH, she told me that you were the one that wanted me to go on the block as a pawn. And then the next week, I thought you wanted me to go up as a pawn again because of that. And then this week, they're telling me that you are saying things about uh, uh, that, that you would put me and Todd on the block. That doesn't even make sense. Why did I even believe that? Uh, and, and Matt is like, right. Yeah. No, yeah, that doesn't. But yeah, I just wanted to talk to you about because I just heard that you like felt like I left you out of some things and I don't want you to feel that way. He's like, yeah, no, that's not it's that's like beside the point at this point, Matt. They want you out. Spicy told me that she's going to target you. And he's like, mm -hmm, right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> same thing. Same thing as Lexus. Uh, Matt goes back downstairs and and he, he goes and he talks to Spicy again. He's like, Spicy, calm down. It's going to be OK. We don't believe it. It's going to be fine. Don't freak out. And Spicy is freaking out. She's like, I just, what, what is he doing right now? I can't believe he's saying all these things about me. Uh, and then uh, she's also, like, should I go and talk to him? Should I go and talk to him? He's like, no, 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 no. Don't go talk to him. He's like, I want to go talk to him. She opens the door. She's like, hey, Goose. And he's like, hey, I'm just busy right now. I want to go talk to Anthony. She's like, well, what's going on, Goose? What the f*** is going on, Goose? Uh, and he's like, no, nah, I just want to talk to Anthony, okay? I just want to talk to Anthony. There's stuff going on. Um, so she leaves. And she's like, he wants to talk to you, Anthony. Why does he want to talk to you, Anthony? Anthony, Anthony, fix this for me, please. Anthony, Anthony, please. <laughs> and so Anthony goes in and Goose gives the same spiel to Anthony. 
I can't believe they're flipping trying to convince me to go against you and Matt and Anthony. Finally, finally, somebody understands how to respond to this. He's like, yes, Goose, thank you. I knew it. This is what I've been trying to say. You know what I mean? Uh, and, and like now we know. Now we know we're going to keep this in our back pocket. Um, and he gives Goose some advice. This is how you should proceed moving forward. Play dumb. Be like, oh, man, I just got in over my head. I don't know what happened. I'm sorry. Uh, and, and so on and so forth. And that's how Goose proceeds for the rest of the drops is that he's that's basically line for line what he says. Again, Anthony putting words into people's mouths. Um, and so uh, so he so, so Anthony is like, calm down. Don't worry about it. Just don't say anything to anybody. Anthony doesn't quite know at this point that like it's fully blown. Um, and so. Uh, so this is how this is basically the story of how the women lost goose like mm -hmm. completely unforced error. He was so loyal yeah. to them. He even named a new sub alliance within the directors with them, with Spicy, Avery and Kayla. He called them the union um, because, uh, you know, it was keeping in, in theme. Um, and and now they're like, now he's going to rat out the union. He made it in the first place. Uh, and, and it's, and it's just, it's just a, a whole mess, a whole mess of a situation. Um, and, and it's again, just like, none of this should have happened. <laughs> none no. of this needed to happen. The women have like spicy has, this is the thing. She has the advantage. She always has had the advantage. She actively alienates her own numbers with, with the things that she's doing. There was no need for any of this. Why do you think she alienates them like that? Like, why, if you, we did at least watch her first season on feeds. Like, we do have a big, like, why do you think she does that? O outside of just, like, being I don't chaotic think and being bored. I, th no? I, think, I think that she just very, very actively plays the middle way too hard. Um, and so, like. Like, she just doesn't have to do half of what she's doing. She, exactly. She leans in mm. so hard that she's, like, putting herself into a difficult position. Like if, if playing the middle is holding Anthony's hand over here and Bailey's hand over here, uh, what Spicy is doing, instead of being like, hey guys, come here, come here, and getting them as close to her as possible and as close to each other as possible while maintaining her position in the middle, mm -hmm. what Spicy does is, Anthony, run! Bailey's <laughs> coming for you! <laughs> Bailey, run! Anthony's coming for you. And then they run out and she's trying to hold on to both sides now. And it's like, oh my God, this is so difficult. Why are they doing this to me? That's such a good way of putting it. Okay. All right. <laughs> Thank you. No, I, I follow now. I follow much more than I was before because I was like, why? I don't, but that makes, that makes sense. That the optimal strategy is to you keep inside all of the dirt and drop little hints when you need when when the, you need the power to shift yes but and you need you do need to maintain some separation you don't want to get them absolutely. so close that they start holding each other's hand uh -huh. um but uh but you don't want them so diametrically opposed that you are now finding yourself you know in this really difficult spot um and then like on top of that she's like uh like you know many other things of course it's a very simplified uh way of putting it but um, but this is this is the position that they found themselves in, and the noms now have now stayed the same. Spicy really wants Todd to stay. Uh, Anthony really wants Tola to stay. Um, he's basically Todd already pitched to Anthony, and Anthony's already given Todd his whole like, "Sorry, bro, you said my name." So, what can we do? Donna told me. Dennis told me. Uh, and Todd's like, "No." I, but I didn't. And he's like, really? Really? I heard it from multiple sources and you didn't really, you didn't even do it, really? Um, uh, but in the meantime, Spicy is, is fighting hard. Um, she's, she's, the very last thing we saw in the drops was her pitching to Avery, like, hey, you need to be on board with me on this. We need Todd to stay. Um, and Avery was like, eh, maybe um like they're not really that far on board uh but she's willing to hear todd out she's willing to hear spicy out um and this is what it comes down to assuming the executive veto doesn't change all of this uh it comes down to potentially a four 
on four high vote. It's Spicy, Avery, Lex, uh, Spicy, Avery, Kayla, and um, Bailey, four votes, against Anthony, uh, Vivek, Matt, and Lexus, four votes. Um, which would mean Goose is the tiebreaker. Now, this is where, this is what I referred to at the beginning of this podcast, where I was like, the whole time, people are like, man, it's gonna be Todd. He's gonna go. And I was like, how? Because yeah. Spicy has Goose. The tie can be broken in favor of Todd. And he wants Todd to stay actively, and he wants Tola to go actively. How could they possibly lose? Oh, what the flip. <laughs> <laughs> What the flip and the flip. Mm. Now, it's not quite that simple, though, because despite the, the rifts, the newfound rifts uh, between um, uh, Goose and the women, he has, even after all of that, promised uh, Todd that he would break the tie in his favor if it went that way. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know why, because it doesn't make any sense from his perspective <laughs> <laughs> to be like, I'm actively targeting Bailey. I just got played by all these women, but I'm going to break the tie in favor of the women and Todd, <laughs> Bailey's closest ally. Why would that be the case? Because right? he just like, wants to be in good with the women. I think that he just feels like, oh, I think that he was properly oh. gaslit into believing that it was all of his fault. And now he's like, I need to salvage my relationship with these women. But he doesn't want he he's he's telling Todd, don't tell anybody I'm gonna do this. <laughs> My favorite thing is when like even we obviously don't have all the information now, but like it does seem like this perhaps defies logic why he would do this. And my favorite thing is whenever Taryn has to relay that to everybody and be like, don't know why. Uh moving on. <laughs> Just no there's there's no sense to be made uh, in the move, and I don't even know his own justification because we haven't seen it. Exactly. Uh, so yeah, um, and and it's the kind of thing too where it's like because it makes so little sense given the newfound situation, it it feels like even if he means it right now, which he might not, he might be lying. Uh, it's probably something that Anthony would be able to be like, hey, this doesn't make any sense. Why would you do this? Mm -hmm. And he would probably change his mind. But who knows at this point? If he also, keeps it a secret, you know. Right. Well, that's, so he was saying, Todd, don't tell anybody until a, a, a specific point in time in which we can finally tell everybody. And Todd was saying, I don't want anybody to know ever because yeah. I don't want Anthony to talk you out of it, essentially. Uh-huh. Um, so who knows? But with, with the executive veto coming into play, there's a halfway decent chance that none of this matters at all um and 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 who knows i would imagine that the second i this i imagine this is what happens tola starts looking eventually they find out the executive veto is not there the second that happens the infighting stops because why would you continue to infight needlessly when this might not even matter um mm -hmm. and it all it all comes and now all the discussion turns to where is the executive veto who has it so on and so forth uh and trying to figure that out um and so you know I, I think that like all of this momentum in this current direction it, it it just it might be abruptly diverted into a different direction see well we ha have we seen any conversations between goose and matt and lexus as of the latest daily job because i don't I've, i don't think that we have about just the initial one about whether or not we want, they want Todd or Tola to go. Because in my mind, if Goose is like believing the, uh, uh, the directors to still be somewhat cohesive, then I think that he would believe that, okay, well, if Avery, Kayla, and Vic are all okay with Todd staying, then why wouldn't the same be for Matt and Lexus? Maybe Anthony not right now, but if the majority is swinging in this way, then it makes much more sense for me to then just go ahead and be like, okay, Todd, I'd rather you stay as opposed to Tola. But I just... Uh, <laughs> 
Unfortunately, even though we got 12 hours of drops, like there's still so much we're missing in terms of where Goose currently sits. I would imagine that we're going to be getting a, 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 a minuscule amount of information about how the eviction is going to play out uh, tomorrow because they want to keep us in the dark. Um, so who really knows at this point? Um, the answers uh, will, I assume, get, be given to us in some piecemeal form on Thursday's drop uh, after the eviction and all of the stuff happens. My fear, though, is that that whole scene I played out for you uh, is like cut short because they need to fit in the executive veto and the sponsor and the vote uh, and all of that stuff in this next episode. Um, but uh, but who knows? I mean, it, listen, it it was it was entertaining to watch Goose flip yeah, out. It sounds like it. Yeah. So mm. got that going for us. Interesting. <laughs> Can't wait to see what tomorrow brings. I mean, we certainly will see it. <laughs> <laughs> so, trying to remain positive, you guys. Um. All right. Anything else we should talk about before we wrap up here? Um. I mean, I, I'm. I am glad that this week just it, it did sort of like leave a lot more intrigue than we initially thought um i did think that it was going to be a pretty straightforward week i thought you know mm -hmm. bailey was Me probably too. going to end up you know as the replacement nominee now whether or not she was ultimately going to be backdoor there's still like a lot of conversation about that the way that things have been going it probably seemed like that would have been the case um but now that lexus and matt have been sort of like clued in on just how much they could be on the outs with the rest of the directors. Um, yeah, now we're in this position where everyone's a little gun shy because they're trying to save their pieces and how that translates and trickles all the way on up to Anthony and Vic is very interesting. So now we're, this is a very pivotal moment for mm -hmm. the both of those players. So I do wonder just how that is going to pan out. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very, uh, I'm a little nervous. I'm nervous for how this can, how this works out. No, I know. And you know, that's like part of it too. The end of this, you know, kind of everybody, all three of us were like, and there will be an episode tomorrow. And I, it, it this season is like good so far though. Like it, it, it's interesting and that's why it's like a bummer that we don't have the feeds because I bet you if we had feeds this would be like really interesting there would be a lot of stuff to talk about um things are fluid but also very messy and V and Anthony have a stranglehold on the game like this is not you know BB19 right now completely I know the first couple of weeks kind of were looking like that pattern but right now what we've talked about is like movement and even Aman is saying he's nervous about how it's going to work out. Like there's skin in the game. We have some, you know, we're rooting for certain people. So I'm, I'm hoping that like the next week also like keeps this momentum rolling and, and things continue to be leaky and messy and, you know, not super solid. Um, yeah, that's all. Yeah. And more content. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what we have for you then today. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the uh, the podcast, the discussion here tonight. Uh, we will be back tomorrow night to talk through uh, whatever we're going to get tomorrow night. Uh, so stay tuned for that. I will be live on Twitch watching Survivor, and then, and then the episode will be reacting to it live over there if you want to hang out. Um, and then, again, after the episode, we'll, we'll talk it through. And then on uh, Thursday, I, I will, you know, probably talk to the evicted player uh, and um, ask them who they think is going to win, especially if it's Tola. Oh, God. <laughs> and then uh, see where we go from there. So stay tuned for all of that. Um, Maggie, what do you got going on? Yeah, um, you can find me on threads, Instagram, TikTok, at MLMorgan underscore. Follow me there. Keep up with what I've got going on. And Amon. You can follow me everywhere at Amon Adwin. Obviously, always here for BBKN12, as well as 
Drag Race Season 16 with me, Liana, and Beth. We're getting down to the wire on that season as well. So make sure you check it's been us fun. out over there. It has been. It's been a pretty it's good season. A, it's been like the queens are it's one of my favorites. Nasty. It's one of my favorites yeah. of, the, of the past couple seasons. So definitely would, check that out. I would out. agree. It's mm. fun. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you all so much for joining us here tonight, and we will see all of you next time.